today we are going to be talking about Jaguar. Now, Jaguar is a brand that is synonymous with some of the most beautiful looking cars. In fact, the E-Type was termed as the most beautiful car ever built. So when you talk about designing a Jaguar, that has to be one of the most difficult design jobs in the world because you have to carry on with that tradition. And now taking over that tradition is Mr. Julian Thompson. He is the new design director at uh, Jaguar and we are going to be chatting with him. Julian, thank you so much for taking time out in these difficult times. Uh, this is not the ideal setup we would like to interview you in. This should have been in a design studio. I know you have one of the best design studios in the world and that is ideally where I would have loved to interview you. Unfortunately, yeah, that cannot perfect. happen right now in the current times. You said that you have been inspired by cars uh, at, a, at a young age. Uh, so what inspired car design? Where did you uh, get the inspiration to start designing cars from? Really, my uh, my father always uh, always taught us to draw. I mean, he was always very important that you know we, we just drew and always encouraged us to be uh, very much, you know, be very creative and, and make things and draw things. And I just drew cars, really. I, I was interested in cars, I was very excited about cars. And I didn't draw much else, to be honest. Right from an early age, the first thing I, I drew was a car and I just kept on drawing cars. I think a lot of children do do that. And some people, a lot of children do grow out of it, but some don't like me and we just keep drawing cars. And uh, I was very lucky to find a living uh, doing exactly the thing I love so much. Right. Uh, so, uh, in fact, now talking about uh, Jaguar, what, according to you, uh, makes a Jaguar design different? If you want to, if you have, if the company has such an exciting history and exciting following, you feel a real responsibility, uh, first of all, to design for that company. And then you want a company which you want to be part of, you want to join that club, you want to be, you know, you mentioned the E-Type, you know, you want to be able to be as good as they were and carry on that, that, uh, that history, be part of that history yourself. And so it's a, it's a tremendous task to be designing for Jaguar. But at the same time, you know, that's what makes it so exciting. You're part of that exclusive club. You've been given the, the keys to the toy shop to create something. And, you know, that's always so wonderful. So, uh, Julian, tell me something. How do you prepare yourself for this? Because like you said, there is a huge pressure. There's a huge, a huge expectation. And then uh, with a brand that has a history like uh, Jaguar, you have to maintain all those... Uh, uh, ideology is all the design signatures that uh, make Jaguar so special. At the same time, also look towards the future, design stuff for the future. So how do you achieve that balance and how do you cope up with this pressure as a designer? Yeah, I think, you know, it's, if, it's very difficult. If you have a brand which is so much history in its past, you know, um, how you take the, the best parts of the philosophy of that company um, and keep them and then also modernize the bits you need to as well. And for Jaguar, it was about, you know, very, very striking designs, very, very innovative designs, real sort of bravery in what it did. The cars like the E-Type, the D-Type and the XJ6, they're all very, very different. So you have to you have to be part of that movement, part of that philosophy, but you've got to be respectful of, of where it came from as well. And people have a certain expectation for Jaguars. They expect them to be very beautiful, very pure, very, very balanced. So those are the sort of the qualities we try to take forward. And how was it working with uh, Ian Callum? And are there any uh, design signatures or the go-to design elements from Ian Callum that you will now want to retain in, in your future designs or maybe build upon them or maybe give a completely new direction to the design? How, how would you go about it? Fortunately, Ian Callum was a friend I've known since 1982. He was actually my first uh, real car designer, if you like, I met when I was a student at Ford. In the UK and we've been very good friends ever since and we remain good friends and so when we started at Jaguar in 2000 you know it was very exciting to be working with one of your best friends and very exciting to work with a guy who previously just talked about design just in your spare time because he wanted to and now you had the opportunity to really work together so the, the last 20 years of the end have been really exciting and good fun you know really sounding off with each other. We've been, we've had a relationship which is a bit yin and yang, if you like, you know, um, probably I was a guy who was probably wanted to go further and he was a guy who was uh, exercising a little bit more caution and, you know, really making sure we didn't get too crazy. And it, and it was a good mix. Well, uh, personally for me, I think uh, the E-Type is the most beautiful car I have personally seen. In fact, that was the first car I drove in the UK. And I was lucky enough to drive the Eagle E-Type uh, of all the cars. Oh, so yeah, wow. I really, 
consider myself very privileged and lucky having done that yeah, and uh, but uh, what is what is your favorite uh, jaguar of all times and uh, if you were to maybe break it into the past and the present what is your most favorite jaguar in the past and what the present um well i, I guess you know the e-type's up there you know i mean the e-type is is a fantastic car but probably for me the favorite one would probably be the d-type the racing cars you know which have an extra sense of purity about them uh, the E-Type is a very interesting car, you know, as, you, as you mentioned. And I think not only was it very, very beautiful, I think what it represented at the time in the marketplace, which was something which is so fresh and new, but also quite affordable. You know, here was a car which, you know, for the same price as a, as a Porsche, went, you know, almost twice as fast, you know. Can you imagine that in today's, you know, we bought out a car which was the same price as Porsche, went twice as fast. You know, it's, it's, momentous statement and then if you look at a 356 Porsche against uh, an E-Type you know, the difference in the, the volumes and the language it's absolutely they look like 100 years apart you know and so for me the E-Type represents something slightly different than that you know I look at the launch of that car and I, I know all the stories about how it was launched in Geneva in 1961 you know if I could ever do anything half as good as that and half as significant I'll be very very pleased in terms of modern Jaguars, um, I, uh, I, I, lo I love the Jaguar I-Pace. I think it's a, a beautiful piece of design and a great car to drive. Um, but um, I have a very you know, real fondness for the uh, F-Type as well, the sports cars. There will always be the more sporty cars, which I like the most. Designing a Jaguar is a challenge in itself, but now you have a few new challenges uh, from where I'm sitting. It looks like uh, you have the SUVs, uh, fine, there is a design language that has been sort of put into place now with the likes of the F-Pace. But you have the SUVs, you have a platform sharing uh, for these SUVs with uh, Land Rover, which has a completely different uh, approach towards design, a completely different approach towards engineering as well. Uh, so where do you, uh, you know, draw that uh, line or uh, where do you draw a common line between the two? because that's a big challenge. And then you have the uh, new electrification uh, coming into place, which could change the face of uh, the face and the shape of cars as we know them. So with all these new possibilities and at the same time, new challenges within the Jaguar brand, how, how are you now uh, looking at charting uh, the course? At the moment, you're right. We have everything changing. You know, we have some very obvious technological uh, improvements coming like electrification, and autonomous cars and all the connectivity that goes along with those. But at the same time, people's attitudes are changing to transportation. You know, they want cars which are cleaner, they want cars which uh, are perhaps not so ostentatious. There's a different temptation for luxury. So it's it's a very interesting time to be designing a car. So I think what when you're designing a company like Jaguar, you have to think about what Jaguar represents. But then you have to think, what does it represent in the modern world? How do you change all those values of uh, beauty, luxury, and innovation, and how do you make them really um, apply to, to a new world and a new set of customers, which, which are changing at the same time as well. So that's what we do a lot of studies on. We think about our customers. We think about what sort of things they're going to like in the future. SUVs are, you know, they are just a market segment which continues to grow. Um, but, you know, as you get more pressures on weight and, and um range for the electric ones, you know, they start to get smaller and lower, you know, and, and sleeker. And you'll find that saloon cars are, are getting perhaps taller and bigger because they have to because um, of electrification. Whereas SUVs are having to get smaller and lower and, and more aerodynamic and they're sort of meeting in the middle now. So there's not really such um, categorization of vehicles going forward. They're all starting to go um, into uh, sort of merging to, into a certain uh, dimension um, against Land Rover products, you know, I think we're very, very different. You know, we are we are cars about which are about driving. You know, they are about driving. They are about sportiness. Even a world of, of autonomous vehicles, we still think the driving element is very, very important. Whereas this, you know, the Land Rover products are about versatility and functionality, and you know, the Range Rover cases, it's, it's uh, you know, premium luxury as well. So we have a different place where we sit with our products. And we're fortunate we're with Land Rover because, you know, they are the best of the, uh, company in the world for developing SUV, te SUV technology. So it's good for us. Right. And uh, one interesting question that we had from one of our readers was, uh, is it possible to design a good looking car with regular wheel sizes? No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's, uh, 
No, it, it is it is more difficult. I mean, you know, the um, you know the car is a it's like a it has a certain proportion, like a like a beautiful animal or a beautiful person, you know. And the wheels are almost like its legs or its feet, you know. They've got to be the right size, you know. And I think it's True. you know we do exaggerate that. It's it's how we draw them. They 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 do look better on on big wheels. Having said all of that, you know, it's um, it can't be your excuse to make your design work. You know, you've got to. You can't just resort to big wheels to make things work. So you've got to, you've got to do, um, you've got to uh, know your 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 skills to really make sure you optimize everything around those wheels. I think what is happening now is that particularly we mentioned electric cars. And electric cars normally have a battery underneath the occupants to drive the, the car up, and then we get SUVs as well. So you, you get a bigger, bigger, bigger. You get, you get a, a bigger fatter body if you like you know and and to do this you have to like increase the wheels at the same size you know? so as cars get bigger and and you know larger you have to keep up scaling the wheels so when people think wheels are getting bigger and bigger and bigger you've got to notice that cars are getting bigger and bigger and bigger so you've got to do these two things right do you uh, do you see any scope for a, a small lightweight jaguar maybe not like a lotus but i don't know i'd love to do a, a, a smaller jaguar sports car it's very lightweight um but lightweight is difficult, difficult difficult to do with electric cars i think you know everything we're doing now has to have an electric element going forward so to do a car again like the those at least light as that and nimble as that is probably quite tough in the electric world uh depending on how much usability you want out of it in terms of range um i think small cars generally are a market that's very very important i think um after covid19 we're going to see people we're already, already seeing people in London buying cars. You know, people I've heard of people who have, haven't got cars in London who are now buying them because they, you know, because they don't want to go on public transport anymore. They want that personal space. And those people, those types of people across the planet living in cities, will want cars which are small, easy to use, nice to drive. But they want things which are fun to drive as well, and they want all those luxuries associated with a larger car. So I think that's a good option for Jaguar to do something which is small uh very nimble fun to be fun to own and fun to be seen in and you know and has all the luxuries of one of our bigger cars i'd love to do something like that i think a new jaguar is always something worth waiting for and looking forward to for every car enthusiast out there thank you so much for having a lovely chat with us uh, julian and thank you so much for taking time out yeah. and hopefully the next time we have a chat it would be in your design studio with yes, the rest of you. yeah thank you very much good talking to you